from 3 News Now and the Omaha World Herald. This is Omaha Sunday Morning with Jennifer Griswold. This week on Omaha Sunday Morning, a western Nebraska farmer is proving age is just a number. With nearly a century of experience, he's passing the farming bug onto his grandkids and great-grandkids. Plus, a political cartoon got people talking this week. What people had to say about a strip involving the White House and why it featured Cheetos. Plus, leaders of a Nebraska town are keeping a close eye on Washington as DACA discussions swirl. Why they are worried their town could be forever changed by a policy change they have no control over. Good morning and thanks for joining us this Sunday. I'm Jennifer Griswold. Life in a small town comes with an overwhelming sense of community where everyone knows everyone and neighbor helps neighbor. So when word spread that the town grocery store, main gathering place in Elwood, a town of about 700, was about to close up shop, neighbors jumped into action. They became business partners to keep it open. Omaha World Herald visual journalist Ryan Soderland shows us how they're keeping shelves stocked with the support of the whole town. Well, without a store, towns tend to die out. There's, you have to drive to another town to get your groceries and people don't want to move to a little town that doesn't have a grocery store a lot of times. Anytime a store closes, you lose a, a, a center point, a focal point of the community. Uh, we're 14 miles away from the closest grocery store, so what it meant to all of us is that when we did go grocery shopping, you had to really make sure that your, your list was good or you were ready to compromise on the things that you were going to make. If you want a town, you better buy you better buy things in your town, gas, a lot of things. And if you have a business of your own, then you really realize how important that is. You want people to patronize you. Well, you know, how are <laughs> It's been great having it. And a, and a cooperative where the, the town has invested in the business. And so anytime that you own uh, you have part ownership, it means more and it's more special to you. A lot of people are very happy, especially the elderly that don't want to have to drive and some of them are not capable of driving out of town. And we do make deliveries to the ones that can't drive at all. So It's been really interesting watching the store grow and develop. And we're all very proud, and I think even, I think whether people are shareholders or not, they're proud of what we accomplished here. Always so much pride in small towns. The Elwood Hometown Cooperative Market was part of a larger community revitalization effort that included a new library and a spruced up downtown. It reopened in 2013 under co-op ownership with more than 120 people each buying shares in the business. Four years later, the town calls it a success story. A South Omaha grocery store is celebrating Nebraska's 150th anniversary with a mural, and that work of art is almost complete. Volunteers and professional artists have spent the last several months creating a massive mural near 36th and Q. Grants and help from supermarket owner Spartan Nash paid for the project. The artist took four weeks of designing before painting could begin. We've spent a lot of time drawing and clarifying all the figures and the shapes. And after the drawing is done, then somebody will come in and fill in all the solid colors. And then the final step is to add a glaze of brown or white and kind of add the shadows and highlights. Artists say the piece tells the story of all Nebraskans from west to east, stopping in South Omaha along the way. Volunteers are planning a dedication for next month. A well-known 1800s era historic building in Fremont was a time capsule staying relatively untouched for years. Now the three-story May Brothers building has new life. 3 News Now reporter Lindsay Thies got a tour and a history lesson. 
in downtown Fremont off 6th and Park Streets. <laughs> New life brews inside. Three years ago, Nancy and Glenn Ellis purchased this three-story structure. It had sat vacant for nearly 30 years, leaving a literal hidden gem. We walked in and, and poked our heads above that drop ceiling and saw that 10 ceiling. It's like, and it was a large 18, 17 foot ceiling. It's like, oh my gosh, this is such a great building. Everything just fell into place. Everything came together. Glenn Ellis, inspired, researched the history of the old space. He says that three brothers, Joseph T. May, Jacob K. May, and William L. May, established a grocery store in 1868 after outgrowing a smaller building in town. The fourth brother, Charles H. May, later joined them. Over the years, Omaha's Petros bought the space, changing it to a Kresge's Five and Dime and renovating the other floors to office space. Do you ready to go upstairs? Yeah. All right. Space it's... that has remained relatively untouched. This door here. <laughs> As you walk in, it had a safe uh, for their accounting department. The original safe, doors that still have the original signs painted on them. Original rustic beams are all still there. Hardwood floors sit underneath dust. And then the one more uh, office down here, this was actually a doctor's office. So you got to take yourself back to the 1940s. But the Ellis's have big dreams for this place. After three years of work, they opened up fittingly in May of this year. The first floor houses offices for a small software company that Glenn runs and a coffee house fit with a giant painted mural based on the photo of the three founding May brothers. Now, there's still a lot of work ahead. A fire safe stairway and elevator need to go here for the upper floors. But the couple plans for the improvements to have the aesthetic of the May brothers era, a history respected and one that the Ellis's hope will not only leave in a spirit of revival, but with a reconnection. It does appear that some of the ancestry branches did die out. We're just not sure if there's any, nobody's come forward and said, hey, this is our grandfather or something, so. Uh, we would love to, we would love to, to, to know, get some, know, know somebody that their so, father. So fill in some of the blanks of the history. And yeah, it's be great. It's, uh, Love that exposed brick. Now, the couple plans to offer office space for free on the second floor once work is done, specifically to young entrepreneurs trying to get started. The subject of our next story knows a thing or two about hard work. As he approaches his 100th birthday, he shows no signs of slowing down on his family farm. What he attributes to his long life and why his family says he's influencing generations to come 